Hi guys, welcome back to Totally Magic Channel and another card trick. Before we get started on that, hope you're all keeping well and safe during this pandemic. Uh, just a quick reminder, check out the merchandise below the video and also check out the book available on Amazon. Uh, I'll leave the link below the video. Great uh, range of magic in there, some simple card tricks for beginners. Now, what we're going to do is to do a, a, a card trick using a pack of cards. They often say that if you follow the same route or route, you arrive at the same destination. And I want to show that with a deck of cards. Let me show you what I mean. You see, if I take these cards and I give them not one, but two cuts, and then give them not just one, but two shuffles, and I'm going to get you to choose a card. Now, the way I get you to choose a card is as I go through, my thumb will push cards from the top and I want you just to call stop at any point. Stop there. You want this card here. That's an absolute free choice. Now I'm going to show you the card that you've chosen. I'm going to look away. Just remember that card. Okay, just remember the card that you've chosen. We place this back in the pack like this and we're going to lose it. You see, if we replicate the same route we took before, that's cutting once, cutting twice, and then shuffling, not just once, but twice. Is it true that we'll arrive at the same destination? I get the spectator to uh, say stop as I'm dealing these cards. They say stop again. Watch the thumb, just which one do you want to stop on? Stop there. No, you want the next one. You want this card here. A random choice. Now, of course, I didn't know which card you chose in the first place. So only you can tell me if this is impressive or not. Because when we reveal the card that you chose a second time, you look as though you've got a big smile on your face. I'm guessing that is the card that you chose the first time. Now, is that some sort of magic or is it just a coincidence that you managed to find the same card again? I'll tell you what we'll do. What if we've done it a third time, but let's not take the same route. Yeah. What if we just did one cut instead of two? And what if we just done one shuffle instead of two? Once again, I'm going to go through the cards and you can see these as I go through the cards um, as my thumb pushes these. I just want you to call stop. Stop there at this one here. That is the one you want to stop at here. OK, if we take a look at the card you've stopped at, it happens to be the five of hearts. Now, to me. The first time was a 1 in 52 choice of cards. The second time you chose the same card may have just been luck or coincidence. But three times on the trot, that could be classed as totally magic. But let me show you that it's not magic. You see, as a magician, I'm cheating. It doesn't matter if I flick the cards and you say stop. You're always going to end up with the five. OK, how do I know? Well, you probably noticed those keen eyed people out there that I didn't show you the whole pack of cards until now. You see, all of the cards in this pack just happen to be a five, a five, a five, another five. No matter where we go, there's fives all over the place. It doesn't matter if we cut the cards. It's a five. We have a deck of 52 identical cards. So it made no difference whether you took this card or this one. It was always going to be the five of hearts. So there was nothing really magical about taking that same route. However, when you're a real magician, you can create the whole illusion 
watch. 52 identical cards. Just a little flick, it's the flick that does the trick. You're not gonna believe this, but this five of hearts is now a four of hearts. This is an eight of spades, a king of clubs, and so on. And if we go through the entire pack, I want you to look for the five of hearts. There, it's not there, it's not there, it's not here, it's not here. And as we go through, and you can see it's not anywhere to be seen here or here. And in fact, if you count the cards, there's only 51 cards in the pack. There never was a five of hearts. It was all just an illusion. And that really is magical. The secret to this trick is no trick cards. It is just using standard magician's moves. And they're moves that I'm sure every magician watching this video will know anyway. And this is just a routine that I put together just while watching the TV while we're on this lockdown and this pandemic. Uh, so nothing special about it. And this is what magicians do all the time. They take just half a dozen handlings with a pack of cards and put together a simple routine. Now I performed this a couple of times over um, Zoom to friends in the Magic Club, the 365 Club, and also to some of my family as well. Now, the thing with this is that they find it really impressive. As a magician, yeah, it's okay, but hopefully you'll get a few ideas from it. Let me just go through the routine as it is. It looks as though the pack is made up of the same deck, of the same card. But this is it. The pack is normal. You shuffle the card. Oh, by the way, what I'm getting into here is consistency. Okay, because when you do a shuffle or a cut that's out of the ordinary, people ask why. But because I'm repeating it again, it looks consistent, okay? And what I mean by that, when we do the double cut, magicians will know that that's the sort of move you do called a double undercut or something like that. So what I do is I take the cards, they've been shuffled. All the time, I never show the faces. I'm deliberately keeping the cards face down. They cut, sorry, I cut the card once. I just take a small portion, put it on top. I take another cut, put it on top. That gives me the two cuts. I then shuffle the cards twice, once and twice. And the reason I'm doing both of those shuffles and cuts is because I'm gonna do those next time, but as a slight. The spectator, I then deal the cards as I'm gonna deal three times throughout the routine. So again, consistency. So I hold them down, I push my thumb, and they can see those going, and then they stop. This is a free choice, by the way. That's not a force. They pick that, maybe the king. Okay, you put it back into the pack. So I just put it back in the pack, but I'm gonna hold a break. So when I put that on there, I've got a break here to hold that. I then transfer that break by grabbing the cards. So that I'm exaggerating this for the camera, so you can see I've got a break, but of course you wouldn't have it that big. You then do the, the double undercut. So I would take half of the lower portion and put them on top and then I would cut to the break and that brings their chosen card to the top. I then do two shuffles. I shuffle this to the bottom, so I slide that off and do an overhand shuffle. And then I do it again, bringing it back to the top. So this is their card on top. You then get them to choose a card. Now, I don't do this. I do exactly the same move I did before. Consistency. 
I say I'm going to push cards like I did before, the same route, and as I'm pushing these, they can stop any card. Okay. You pull this out, it's any card, you're not worried about this because you're going to do a double lift. Their card is on top, I push this across and get a break under that because when I put that on top, I square the cards up and I'm all ready to do a double lift. If you know a different method of doing the double lift, double turnover, do it your own way. Okay, there's no hard and fast rules here. Okay, and then what makes it convincing is the fact that you never saw their first card. So when you turn this over, they will be surprised that it's the same card. It looks as though they've chosen the card randomly twice and it happens to be the same card. I then take this and I put it to the bottom. Okay, and you might even just wave your hands and they, they get a glimpse. All the time they're seeing the king of clubs, king of clubs, king of clubs. So the third time what you do, you're gonna break the, the route you took, the route. And you say, instead of doing two cuts, I'm gonna do one. Now all I do, because uh, their card is at the bottom, I do a false cut, but I do one. So that was just a false cut, okay? The card's still at the bottom. You then do one shuffle instead of two, bringing the card to the top. There it is there. Now the next move is you get them to choose a card again, but watch this move. Whereas before we do this, and then that's the card they've stopped at, quite a common move that magicians use to force a card is I deal these into my hand like this. Note that I'm dealing those on top. I then start to push. Now at this angle, you can see what's happening. Let me show you that. That's why you would be doing this face on, like that, okay? But let me show you side on. So you do the same again, and they say stop. Now, if you look at that, they think that's the card. You square everything up and they believe that's the card they stopped at. Now again, you might want to use a different force, it's up to you. But there it is there. I then flip this over so it's overhanging the back because I want to get a break under that. As I push this forward, I'm lifting this up and getting a finger break. Again, I'm exaggerating the break for the camera so you can see that. So. It looks as though they've picked the same card three times running. We then can say it wouldn't have made any difference where you chose your card from. And you can just do a riffle down the side and then break and show them the same card again. And put this to the bottom. So the card is at the bottom. You're now gonna do a kind of Hindu force. Now this is a, a, a very convincing move. I remember seeing this um, and when I found out how it was done I, I thought it would, it, it would never work but it fooled me the very first time I saw it. It was done with a uh, what we call a dizzy nudist routine which was where all the cards are blank but in fact the magician that was showing me and I must have only been about eight or nine years old when he showed me this I believed that the whole pack was blank. The king is on the bottom for those of you that know the Hindu shuffle, and I'll put a link to that uh, below in the description, as you pull cards off the top, you turn over this, it looks as though you're showing the card in this position. You pull off more cards, show them again, and again, and again, and again, always kind of just butt up to make sure the others aren't exposed, and you can go all the way through. To the lay person, trust me, it really is convincing. How you do the ending is up to you. Now I cut that to the bottom, so that if they, you can handle the cards and they're getting another glimpse. It's all these little glimpses that they see. They're now convinced it's a pack of 52 King of Clubs, so it was a trick deck. The final thing is just to get it to change into a regular deck and you can do that anyhow you like. I just 
uh, took off two cards and said, this would be the king, this would be the king. I'm putting them at the bottom because when I start turning these over and get to the bottom, okay, I know that that's the king there. So as I'm turning these over, I then do a buckle and turn this over and then this. It looks as though you've gone through all the pack and the king isn't even there. So it was just an illusion. Now you might decide to do that a different way. I suppose those of you who are quite good at the card moves, you could even do a, a switch, couldn't you? You could, you could say, look, if I take one of these kings from the pack, and I suppose you can do a switch, you could either do a double lift or a top change, up to you, and then when you flick it, it's gone. It's not there, 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 and there. You could do something like that. But I leave the ending up to you, how you want to play that. Okay. Hope that was something uh, for you to mess around with. Make your own, pinch a few ideas from it. Maybe make a, a bit of an improved routine. But I quite like the storyline of the route, taking the same route, you get the same result. Break that, do you still get it? I thought that was quite good, but that's me all over. Anyway, that's it. Till next time, don't forget, check out everything below in the description for details of the book, the merchandise, and also some of the slides that we used, some links to those videos as well. Uh, take care. Until next time.